Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Jesus forgave us of all sin, past, present, and even future sin. Andrew brought good news to me. I could understand the Bible more the way he taught it. Jesus forgave you one time, and that's for everything. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week, I'm sharing with you about the power of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. And I tell you, this is very, very important. You cannot live the Christian life in your own strength and power. It's beyond you. It takes God empowering you, and this is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is all about. I am offering a book as my gift to you. On, it's entitled, The New You and the Holy Spirit. The first part of this book is about what biblical salvation is all about. There's confusion over that. The second part is all about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and specifically the gift of speaking in tongues. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't believe in this and they don't believe it's for us today, but I'm telling you, it's revolutionized my life. I speak in tongues a lot. You know, the Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, said that he spoke in tongues more than them all. That means more than not only any individual, but more than all of the people in the church at Corinth combined. He spoke in tongues a lot. The guy who wrote half of the New Testament books spoke in tongues a lot. And I'm telling you, it is a gift for today. It has totally transformed my life. Now, there's been abuses of it, and there's some weirdos that, you know, go out there and claim that they're baptized in the Holy Spirit and do all kinds of weird things, but there's weird people that do everything. You can't reject it just because you've seen somebody do something wrong. You know, people don't counterfeit uh, fake money. They don't counterfeit monopoly money because there's no value to it. If something has been counterfeited, it is because the real deal is valuable. And sure, there's people that have misrepresented the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but that just goes to speak to the fact that it is a powerful gift or Satan wouldn't be trying to discredit and turn, uh, these, turn people against it. So yesterday I was sharing how that Jesus told His disciples not to go anywhere, not to tell anybody about His resurrection until they received power from on high. They had the greatest news in the history of the world, and yet Jesus said, don't share it until I empower you. And I shared scriptures out of John chapter 2 where when Jesus was in Jerusalem the first time, many people believed on Him, but He, he did not commit Himself to them because He didn't want people ministering out of their own ability. We need to receive power from on high, and that's what Acts chapter 1 was talking about. We read these verses yesterday. Now, I was raised in a denomination that said, yes, the Holy Spirit is alive today and active today. They rejected the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They believed that speaking in tongues and the gift of miracles and healings and diversities of tongues and all of these things, the discerning of spirits and stuff, that had passed away. There is nothing in the Word of God. I'm going to deal with this as we go on through, and I'll deal with some specific scriptures. But anyway, they believed that the Holy Spirit was here, but they didn't believe that there was a separate experience where you receive the Holy Spirit. They thought that you got the Holy Spirit, everything that there was to deal with the Holy Spirit at salvation. And anyway, I could spend the entire week just dealing with this. I'm not going to go into detail. Again, this book would deal with this in more detail. We've also got a package where we've got a study guide and where I taught on this in CDs and DVDs. And so it'll go into more information and more detail on this. I encourage you to get that. But let me just use one example here. In John chapter 20, this is after Jesus was resurrected from the dead and He appeared unto His disciples. And in John chapter 20, verse 20, it says, And when He had so said, He showed unto them His hands and His side, where He had been pierced during crucifixion. Then were His disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. Whosoever sins 
uh, unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. So here's Jesus in his resurrected form, and he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So this happened prior to what is recorded in Acts chapter 1. That's what I was reading yesterday. And right before Jesus was caught up into heaven and remained in heaven, this is after his resurrection, he walked on the earth for 40 days. He appeared to the disciples. This instance in John chapter 20 is sometime before his ascension back into heaven. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now, what does this mean? Over here in John chapter 20 and in verse 22, he says, receive ye the Holy Ghost. But over here in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, which was later than that first instance, he says, uh, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So I thought they already had the Holy Spirit. Well, you know what? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You could go into more detail, but many people believe that they receive the Holy Spirit at salvation, and what's recorded in John chapter 20 is salvation because it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. So these disciples confessed that Jesus was their Lord. Matter of fact, right here in John chapter 20 and in verse 28, Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. So he confessed Jesus as Lord. Again, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says you have to confess Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Well, they definitely were believing that because here he was resurrected from the dead and they accepted it. So they confessed him as Lord, believed that he was raised from the dead, and according to Romans 10, 9, you shall be saved. That is salvation. So these people were forgiven. They were saved. And yet he told them, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So there's two ways to interpret that. Either these people received a measure of the Holy Spirit here in John chapter 2, or John chapter 20, verse 22. Either they received a measure of the Holy Spirit, but then there was an, another measure, a greater measure on the day of Pentecost when they received it. It's, it's either that or this was a command for them to receive the Holy Spirit which they would receive later on the day of Pentecost. It's one of those two things, but it shows you that there is a difference between them being saved because they were saved right here and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason I'm making an issue out of this is because a lot of people are taught that you've got everything that there is to get when you get born again, and there is no other experience with the Lord. That is not what this teaches, and this isn't an isolated example either. Look over here in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, and it says in verse 12, this is Acts chapter 8, verse 12, And when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Again, I could show you based on uh, Acts chapter 11, and if I have time, I may get over there, that they would not baptize a person until they had already believed. So these people were believers or they would not have been baptized. And so they, when they believed concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So here is another example, the second one that I've used, that these people believed they were baptized, and when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that they had been saved, then they went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And when they prayed for them, it says in verse uh, 16, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord. So they were saved, they were baptized, but the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon them. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. 
AND WHEN SIMON SAW THAT THROUGH THE LAYING ON OF THE APOSTLES' HANDS THE HOLY GHOST WAS GIVEN, HE OFFERED THEM MONEY. AND OF COURSE THEY REBUKED HIM FOR THIS. BUT MY POINT IN THIS IS SOME PEOPLE WILL SAY, WELL, THEY RECEIVED THE HOLY GHOST, BUT THERE WASN'T ANYTHING LIKE SPEAKING IN TONGUES THAT HAPPENED ON THE DAY OF PENTECOST. YES, THERE WAS, BECAUSE SIMON SAW THAT THEY HAD RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT. THERE WAS A VISIBLE OR PHYSICAL MANIFESTATION, AND TO BE CONSISTENT WITH EVERY OTHER INSTANCE IN THE BOOK OF ACTS, WHEN THE PEOPLE RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT, THEY SPOKE WITH TONGUES. SO HERE IS A SECOND EXAMPLE THAT I HAVE USED OF PEOPLE WHO WERE BORN AGAIN, BUT THEY HAD NOT RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND WHEN THEY RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT, THERE WAS SOME PHYSICAL MANIFESTATION, AND I BELIEVE THAT TO BE CONSISTENT WITH ALL THE REST OF THESE INSTANCES IN THE BOOK OF ACTS, IT WAS SPEAKING IN TONGUES. THEN YOU COME OVER TO THE 10TH CHAPTER, AND THIS IS WHERE CORNELIUS, WHO WAS A CENTURION, HE HAD AN ANGEL APPEAR UNTO HIM, AND they, THE ANGEL TOLD HIM TO GO ASK FOR PETER TO COME AND PREACH THE GOSPEL UNTO HIM. SO PETER CAME DOWN AND PREACHED TO HIM, AND IT SAYS IN VERSE 44, THIS IS ACTS 10, 44, WHILE PETER YET SPAKE THESE WORDS, THE HOLY GHOST FELL ON ALL THEM WHICH HEARD THE WORD, AND THEY OF THE CIRCUMCISION WHICH BELIEVED WERE ASTONISHED AS MANY CAME WITH PETER, BECAUSE THAT ON THE GENTILES WAS POURED OUT THE GIFT OF THE HOLY GHOST, FOR THEY HEARD THEM SPEAK WITH TONGUES AND MAGNIFY GOD. THEN ANSWERED PETER, CAN ANY MAN FORBID WATER THAT THESE SHOULD NOT BE BAPTIZED WHICH HAVE RECEIVED THE HOLY GHOST AS WELL AS WE? SO HERE'S ANOTHER INSTANCE WHERE THE PEOPLE RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT AND THEY BELIEVED. AND SO THAT IS RECORDED. THEN OVER IN THE 19TH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF ACTS, AND I'M JUST PICKING OUT A FEW. THERE'S OTHERS HERE. BUT IN THE 19TH CHAPTER OF ACTS, IT SAYS IN VERSE 1, AND IT CAME TO PASS THAT WHILE APOLLOS WAS AT CORINTH, PAUL HAVING PASSED THROUGH THE UPPER COAST TO EPHESUS AND FINDING CERTAIN DISCIPLES, HE SAID UNTO THEM, HAVE YOU RECEIVED THE HOLY GHOST SINCE YOU BELIEVED? AND THEY SAID UNTO HIM, WE HAVE NOT SO MUCH AS HEARD WHETHER THERE BE ANY HOLY GHOST. NOW, THIS IS SCRIPTURAL PROOF THAT SOME OF OUR MODERN-DAY DENOMINATIONS TRACE ALL THE WAY BACK TO THE NEW TESTAMENT BECAUSE TODAY THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT HAVE NEVER HEARD THAT THERE IS A GIFT OF THE HOLY GHOST BEYOND SALVATION. THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT THESE PEOPLE SAID. AND LOOK AT THIS. PAUL SAID UNTO THEM, HAVE YOU RECEIVED THE HOLY GHOST SINCE YOU BELIEVED? BELIEVED WHAT? BELIEVED ON JESUS. THESE PEOPLE WERE DISCIPLES. IT SAYS THAT THEY FOUND DISCIPLES. THESE WEREN'T CONVERTS. THESE WEREN'T JUST JEWS. THESE WERE PEOPLE WHO BELIEVED ON JESUS AS THE MESSIAH, AND YET HE ASKED THEM, HAVE YOU RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT SINCE YOU BELIEVE? HE WOULDN'T HAVE ASKED THAT IF IT WAS SYNONYMOUS, IF IT WAS AUTOMATIC TO RECEIVE ALL OF THE POWER OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AT SALVATION. HE WOULDN'T HAVE ASKED THEM THIS BECAUSE IT WOULD HAVE BEEN OBVIOUS THAT WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU GOT ALL THAT THERE IS. NO, THESE WERE PEOPLE WHO WERE BELIEVERS, THEY WERE DISCIPLES, AND YET HE SAYS, HAVE YOU RECEIVED THE HOLY GHOST? AND THEY HADN'T EVEN HEARD ABOUT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND THEN IN THE THIRD VERSE, HE SAYS, UNTO THEN, WHAT WERE YOU BAPTIZED? AND THEY SAID, UNTO JOHN'S BAPTISM. AND YOU KNOW, THIS, I'M READING A LITTLE BIT INTO THIS, BUT HOW DID THESE PEOPLE BELIEVE ON JESUS AND GET BORN AGAIN AND BAPTIZED AND YET NOT HEAR ABOUT THE HOLY SPIRIT? I BELIEVE IT'S PROBABLY APOLLOS, AND THIS IS TAKING A NUMBER OF SCRIPTURES, THE 18TH CHAPTER AND A NUMBER OF THINGS AND COMPARING IT, AND APOLLOS WAS A MAN WHO WENT OUT AND HE WAS, he was ZEALOUS PREACHING THAT JESUS WAS THE CHRIST, BUT HE GOT THIS MESSAGE AND LEFT BEFORE THE RESURRECTION AND BEFORE ALL OF THESE THINGS, AND HE WAS OUT PROCLAIMING THAT JESUS WAS THE CHRIST, AND IT WAS TRUE WHAT HE SAID, AND HE WAS GETTING PEOPLE BORN AGAIN, BUT THEY DIDN'T KNOW ABOUT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND SO IT SAYS THAT AQUILA AND PRISCILLA TOOK HIM AND EXPLAINED THE WORD OF GOD UNTO HIM MORE PERFECTLY, AND THEN HE RECEIVED THE HOLY SPIRIT. BUT I BELIEVE THAT THESE ARE PEOPLE THAT WERE CONVERTED UNDER HIS MINISTRY, AND THEY MADE JESUS THEIR LORD, BUT THEY WEREN'T BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY SPIRIT. HOW DID PAUL RESPOND WHEN HE HEARD THIS? IT SAYS IN VERSE 4, THEN PAUL, THEN SAID PAUL, JOHN VERILY BAPTIZED WITH THE BAPTISM OF REPENTANCE, SAYING UNTO THE PEOPLE THAT THEY WHICH, THAT THEY SHOULD BELIEVE ON HIM WHICH SHOULD COME AFTER HIM, THAT IS, ON CHRIST JESUS. WHEN THEY HEARD THIS, THEY WERE BAPTIZED IN THE NAME OF THE LORD JESUS, AND WHEN PAUL HAD LAID HIS HANDS UPON THEM, THE HOLY GHOST CAME ON THEM, AND THEY SPAKE WITH TONGUES AND PROPHESIED. AND SO HERE'S ANOTHER INSTANCE WHERE THE PEOPLE WERE DISCIPLES, 
THEY WERE BELIEVERS. THEY HAD BEEN WATER BAPTIZED, BUT THEY HADN'T BEEN BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY SPIRIT. AND SO PAUL uh, ADMINISTERED THIS TO THEM, AND THEY SPOKE WITH TONGUES AND PROPHESIED. SO HERE'S A NUMBER OF EXAMPLES. THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, in, two, IN THE MOUTH OF TWO OR THREE WITNESSES, LET EVERYTHING BE ESTABLISHED. AND I GAVE YOU, I THINK, FOUR INSTANCES RIGHT HERE WHERE PEOPLE RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT SEPARATE FROM THEM BELIEVING ON THE LORD JESUS CHRIST. AND AGAIN, IN A SENSE, YOU'RE SPLITTING HAIRS WHETHER YOU SAY, WELL, YOU GOT THE HOLY SPIRIT WHEN YOU RECEIVED SALVATION, BUT THEN THERE'S A SECOND EXPERIENCE WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT, OR WHETHER YOU SAY THAT, NO, YOU GOT BORN AGAIN AND THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT IS A TOTALLY SEPARATE EXPERIENCE. YOU CAN'T GET BORN AGAIN WITHOUT THE HOLY SPIRIT CONVICTING PEOPLE. THE HOLY SPIRIT HAS TO BE INVOLVED IN REGENERATION, BUT WHETHER HE'S INSIDE OF YOU OR OUTSIDE OF YOU AND WITH YOU, THERE IS A DIFFERENCE BETWEEN HAVING THE HOLY SPIRIT WITH YOU AND INVOLVED IN YOUR LIFE AND THEN having BEING BAPTIZED. YOU KNOW, TODAY, THE WORD BAPTISM IS A RELIGIOUS TERM THAT PEOPLE APPLY TO ALL KINDS OF THINGS. THERE'S ENTIRE DENOMINATIONS THAT JUST WHEN THEY BAPTIZE, THEY SPRINKLE PEOPLE. BUT THE WORD BAPTIZED, THE REASON... YOU KNOW, THE WORD IS IN THE GREEK, IT IS BAPTIZO. AND THE WORD BAPTIZED IS AN ENGLISH TRANSLITERATION. IN OTHER WORDS, IT'S JUST USING THE SAME GREEK WORD AND IT JUST BROUGHT IT OVER INTO ENGLISH WITHOUT TRANSLATING IT. BUT IF YOU LOOK AT THIS GREEK WORD BAPTIZO, IT LITERALLY MEANS TO IMMERSE, TO DUNK. JOHN THE BAPTIST, HE WASN'T SPRINKLING PEOPLE. IT SAYS THAT JESUS, WHEN HE WAS BAPTIZED, CAME UP OUT OF THE WATER. YOU CAN'T COME OUT OF SOMETHING THAT YOU HAVEN'T BEEN IN. IT SAYS THAT JOHN WAS IN A CERTAIN PLACE BECAUSE THERE WAS MUCH WATER THERE. YOU DON'T NEED MUCH WATER IF YOU'RE SPRINKLING PEOPLE. I'M NOT TRYING TO COME AGAINST ANYBODY'S DENOMINATION. I'M JUST SAYING THAT THE WORD BAPTIZE MEANS TO IMMERSE, TO SUBMERGE, TO LITERALLY OVERWHELM. BUT WHEN THE KING JAMES BIBLE WAS TRANSLATED, THE, the CHURCH HAD GONE TO SPRINKLING INSTEAD OF BAPTIZING, INSTEAD OF IMMERSING, AND SO RATHER THAN TRANSLATE THIS WORD AND SAY THAT YOU MUST BE IMMERSED, YOU MUST BE DUNKED, YOU MUST BE SUBMERGED, OR HOWEVER THEY WOULD HAVE TRANSLATED, THAT WOULD HAVE BEEN OFFENSIVE TO THEIR RELIGIOUS TRADITION, SO THEY JUST TOOK THE WORD AND BASICALLY CREATED A NEW WORD, BAPTIZED, BECAUSE THEY DIDN'T WANT TO OFFEND PEOPLE. BUT LITERALLY, IT MEANS TO IMMERSE. AND THE REASON I'M BRINGING THIS OUT IS THAT THERE IS A DIFFERENCE IN HAVING THE HOLY SPIRIT WITH YOU AND MAYBE EVEN IN YOU WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN AND BEING LITERALLY IMMERSED, SUBMERGED, OVERWHELMED, OVERWHELMED WITH THE POWER OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. THERE IS A DIFFERENCE. AGAIN, MY PERSONAL TESTIMONY, I GOT BORN AGAIN WHEN I WAS EIGHT YEARS OLD. I WAS MADE FUN OF THE VERY NEXT DAY BY MY FRIENDS. THEY COULD TELL I CHANGED. THERE WAS A CHANGE. AND I HAD HAD A SENSITIVITY TO GOD SINCE I WAS EIGHT YEARS OLD. BUT WHEN I WAS 18 YEARS OLD, I HAD AN EXPERIENCE WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT THAT WAS WHEN I WAS BAPTIZED IN THE HOLY SPIRIT, AND IT REVOLUTIONIZED MY LIFE. JUST AS THE DISCIPLES, THEY WERE WEAK, THEY WERE AFRAID BEFORE THEY RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT. PETER DENIED JESUS THREE TIMES. IT SAYS ALL OF THE DISCIPLES FORSOOK JESUS AND FLED. BUT AFTER THEY RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, ON THE DAY OF PENTECOST, THEY WERE BOLD. SO MUCH SO THAT IT SAID THE SCRIBES AND THE PHARISEES TOOK KNOWLEDGE OF THEM THAT THEY HAD BEEN WITH JESUS WHEN THEY PERCEIVED THEIR BOLDNESS. THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT TOTALLY CHANGED THEM. AND MY TESTIMONY IS THAT I WAS AN INTROVERT WHEN I WAS A TEENAGER. I COULDN'T LOOK AT A PERSON IN THE FACE. IF A PERSON SAID GOOD MORNING TO ME, I COULDN'T SAY GOOD MORNING BACK. I LITERALLY REMEMBER WALKING DOWN THE STREET IN ARLINGTON, TEXAS, AND SOMEBODY SAYING GOOD MORNING, AND THEY WERE TWO BLOCKS DOWN THE STREET BEFORE I COULD SAY GOOD MORNING BACK. I COULDN'T LOOK AT A PERSON IN THE FACE AND TALK TO THEM. BUT MAN, WHEN I RECEIVED THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, IT WAS A PROCESS. IT DIDN'T JUST INSTANTLY HAPPEN, BUT INSTANTLY THINGS BEGIN TO CHANGE. AND WITHIN A VERY SHORT PERIOD OF TIME, MAN, GOD HAD TOTALLY TRANSFORMED MY LIFE. 
And I can tell you that you'd have never seen me on television if it hadn't have been for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. You would have never seen me stand up and last for over 50 years if it hadn't have been for the strengthening power of the Holy Spirit. And that is not just available to you upon salvation. You need to receive this experience that Jesus talked about that you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You will be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days hence. That's what he said in Acts chapter 1. You need this second experience. Salvation, forgiveness of sins is absolutely essential and that establishes your eternal destiny. But you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a separate experience. It's a second experience and I've given you examples in the Word of God where they were saved, but they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit, and so they had a separate experience. If you have made Jesus your Lord, but it seems like, man, you just don't have the power, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It will totally transform your life. I really believe that. And I've not only experienced this myself, but I have seen other people just transformed by this. Now, there are people who go through the motions and they'll pray a little prayer with you and stuff and it doesn't always seem to take with them. But I have seen thousands of people that when they get serious and they say, God, I don't want to live under my own strength and power. I want you. I want the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill me and come and control me. And when people mean that with their heart, I guarantee you God is going to come upon you and give you power. This word power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's the word dunamis in the Greek. And it's the word we get dynamite and dynamo from. You know, a dynamo is a power unit that puts out all of this power. Dynamite is powerful. It's, it's power in a very small package. And this is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You get supernatural, miraculous, miracle-working power on the inside of you. You can also say it this way, that there are a lot of people today who pray and believe for healings, and we see people healed. You can trace it to the, uh, to the last person, the people who believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a second work in your Christian experience. They are the ones that see the healings, that see the miracles, that see all of these miraculous things. People who reject the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues are the ones who don't see healings. And they come up with the doctrines that God put this sickness on me to teach me something, etc. People who manifest power in their life, every one of them believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as being separate from salvation. People who believe it's all together and they, don't, they deny the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they don't see these powerful things happen. Which one do you want? It's that simple. I've got this book that I'm going to give to anyone who requests it. You can call the number on your screen. It will describe what true salvation is. And then the second part of the book will talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and specifically the gift of speaking in tongues. This is my free gift to you, anybody who wants it. We also have a package that has a lot of other study guides on this if you want to go into more detail. Our announcer will give you all of the details, but I encourage you to call and get this free book. And if you don't have the baptism and speak in tongues, ask, and we'll pray with you and you'll receive today. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a small glimpse on how your partnership with Andrew Walmack Ministries and Karis Bible College is sowing seeds around the world. When you partner with us, you are supporting our communication services department, where our team of staff minister through free prayer and materials to anyone who calls in. This team is the front line of AWM, often the first contact many viewers have with the ministry. We average over 2,000 calls a day, 400 plus thousand calls per year. 65% of our calls uh, are still prayer calls. And our job is simply take the seed that Andrew planted with his teaching, water it, tell them who they are, tell them what the Word says, pray for them, get them healed, connect them with God. Thank you, partners, for enabling us to share the heart of God with our callers as we see lives transformed through His unconditional love and grace. To receive prayer, materials, or to become a partner, give us a call at the number on your screen today.
You can get Andrew's book titled, The New You and the Holy Spirit, in either English or Spanish today, absolutely free as a special website offer when you go to awmi.net. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is only available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia while supplies last. Go to awmi.net today to receive this free offer. Today's series is an abbreviated version of Andrew's teaching titled, The New You and the Holy Spirit. This four-part teaching in its entirety is available on CD or DVD as seen on TV. Both were made from the original five-week broadcasts. This teaching is also available in a companion study guide. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount. You can also get these products in the New You and the Holy Spirit package, which includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either the CD or DVD album. This package has a catalog value of $75, but you can get it today for a gift of $50 or more. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I knew that Karis was going to be a place where I was going to learn about the Bible, about Christ, about God, who I was and whose I was. When I came to Karis Bible College, I get to renew my mind. And now I, I believe that I'm going to be ready to someday me be able to fulfill God's call for my life and to disciple other people. I don't know what other Bible colleges teach, but this one's definitely got it right. I mean, I love the teaching. The teaching is just, it's, it's blue chip, you know, it's, it's top notch. And then also, you know, it's just like a big family here. I mean, it's, we all care about each other and we all just have a good time with each other. This is a college that God has ordained and established for the purpose of launching an entire generation into the world to change the world and to change the way that it sees Him. Working hard, the Rockies are calling you. Hear world-class speakers, real kingdom leaders. This June 12th through the 14th, attend the Kingdom Business Summit. Learn from Andrew Womack, Willie Robertson, Paul Milligan, Dr. Henry Cloud, Billy Epperhart, Dr. Lance Walnow, Dr. Dean Radke. Check out kbs2019.org for all the info.